Did you just break your toe, your foot, Liz Frank injury, a heel fracture? These are the top 12 devices right now to get your bone healed up and we're starting now. A broken ball of the foot, toe, Liz Frank, heel, cuboid bone, ankle, all of these are so hard to come back from. My patients don't realize how long it takes to get better. The number one question I get is, why is this taking so long? It hurts more than I thought it would. I'm weaker for longer than I thought it was. So unless you're a young kid that's in perfect health, it's going to take you a while. And we're talking six weeks of complete protection, six more weeks of being braced and protected further, six more weeks of really babying it, and then up to one year where you're finally back to normal, where you are before the injury. So these are brutal, and you wanna use probably all 12 of these things in a lot of cases to get back, to keep going with your life, and to keep your muscle strength up. These are my favorite 12 devices. Number 12 in our countdown is a walking cane. These ones, you go on the opposite side of your foot. So you use your good leg, and you lean towards your cane to get pressure off that foot. Things that actually work a little bit better than a cane are a rollator or a walker. So these are the ones that you think older people use to walk on, but this is probably better than a cane. It's better than crutches in my opinion. It's just more practical. They're cheap. You can fold them up. You don't even need insurance to cover these things because you can buy them for so low cost. And all the stuff we talk about, I'm gonna link some of my favorites down below and it helps support the channel. So I appreciate you guys for clicking on those as well. Studies show that, that canes and walkers are very effective. I think they're more effective than crutches, even though the studies don't necessarily advocate for them. I think personally, they make a lot more sense. A study in 2009 found that, that canes can provide some offloading and they get about 25 to 30% of pressure off the offloaded foot. Number. 11 a foot elevator pillow when you first break your foot your foot is swollen it's painful it's tender you want to get an elevator pillow you want to lift it up so these are like triangular wedges when you're sleeping at night when you're watching netflix with your broken foot this elevation helps reduce swelling and improves circulation especially in the first few weeks or at nighttime after staying on top of it a study by Houghton in 2015 showed that reduction in swelling can happen by about 30% within 24 hours of activity or after the injury. This does promote faster recovery. Number 10, compression socks or compression wraps. Initially, I always wrap my broken feet, my broken ankles with something called an Una wrap. This can help provide support within the cast or within the walking boot, but it's often used with a, both a cast or a walking boot or a brace. Studies show that compression can help control swelling and support the soft tissues. A study in 2012 found that compression wraps can make a huge difference, up to 40% less pain and swelling improvement in the first few months. Now, you can't put one of these wraps on yourself probably at the beginning, your doctor will do it, but compression socks can be amazing. These are low cost, we're talking like 10, 20 bucks. You can put them on in your walking boot, in your ankle brace, which we'll get to as well. But check those down below. And number nine, that brings me to ankle braces. Not in the first six weeks necessarily for a broken foot or a broken ankle, but after the first six weeks, an ankle brace. There's a lot of different types. An ankle brace like this will fit in your shoe. After the first six weeks, once you're out of your cast or your walking boot, I love ones like this. You can get a lot of different types. There's ones with straps that stabilize you. There's compression ankle braces, which after the first few months are probably better. You can even wear these compression ankle braces in your boot or inside your shoe in your orthotics after the first few months. Initially, you wanna go with a strong cast or a strong walking boot for six weeks. Then you wanna go with an ankle brace like this for the next six weeks. Then the six weeks afterwards, you want one of those compression ankle braces. Now, these don't have to be expensive. We're talking pretty low cost. I leave some of my favorites down below. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on this stuff. These braces are definitely worth it. They're some of the most important things that you can do. And studies show, especially for severe ankle sprains, broken ankles, even broken feet, these can make a big difference after the initial support, 
by about 25% better outcomes in patients with foot and ankle fractures overall, according to a study in 2005 about ankle braces and broken feet and broken ankles. Number eight, orthotics. So take a look right here. When I press down on the ground, see how much the ankle collapses and is unstable. But when you have an orthotic, look at how stable it is. It's not tilting one way or the other. So see, when I put it like that, you can see all the stress through the ankle, but in the orthotic, the support. So a good shoe, a good orthotic, stabilizes your ankle sprain, stabilizes your broken ankle, stabilizes your broken foot. And look at these ones, we're not talking like a hard, stiff, unsupported one. These are soft cushion devices that can help decrease the swelling. Now this isn't for the first six weeks, it's the next six weeks with an ankle brace and it's the next six weeks after that until you feel you don't need it. But it makes a big difference, keeps you more mobile, keeps that swelling down, and keeps you more active. Studies show that orthotics can improve gait and reduce pain during recovery. A study in 2002 by Gross showed that custom orthotics can reduce peak plantar pressure in the healing process by about 25 to 30 percent on the broken bone sites. Number seven, good shoes. This is very important, both in the house and outside the house. There are shoes with a rocker bottom. A walking boot has a rocker bottom built into it. We'll get that, we'll get to that later in the list. For good shoes, number one, you want rocker bottom shoes. So like Hoka's are good. The Brooks Ghost Max is a really good shoe. I list some of my favorites. Ortho Feet are also a great shoe. I list codes for those shoes. The second thing with good shoes is when you're wearing a cast or a walking boot in the first six weeks on one side, you want a foot leveler on the other side. So foot levelers are a shoe that you wear over your shoe so that your hips aren't off balance when you're walking. Those first couple months, people mess up their backs, they mess up their hips, so you want a good foot leveler plus a good shoe. It makes all the difference, I'm telling you, because this is a marathon healing from these broken bones. Studies show that proper footwear is essential for preventing further injury and ensuring proper alignment. A study in 2006 found that supportive shoes can reduce the pain by 15 or more percent and make a much more comfortable recovery. It doesn't seem like a lot, but I'm telling you, it's a lot. Number six, crutches. Personally, I would have left this lower on the list, but I'm going based on the medical studies and the Google searches, but traditional crutches allow for mobility without putting weight on the injured foot. A study in 2005 showed that crutches can get 90% of the weight off the injured foot, but I'm gonna show you some better devices. I already talked about the rollator or the walker. I really like those. Number five, a knee scooter. Knee scooters offer much more comfort, and especially if you're in college or you work at a factory, you can go long distances from the parking lot to your work site pretty quickly, pretty easily. They fold up, they're suitable for non-weight bearing injuries. I love these. They definitely have a great spot in our toolkit. A study in 2011 by Kubiak showed that knee scooters can improve patient mobility by 35% and reduce fall risk by 20% com compared to crutches. But again, I like the walker better than crutches anyway. Number four, the iWalk 3.0. Now, this is not for everybody, but the people who use it, this thing is amazing for inside the house, for going upstairs, for gardening, for mowing the lawn. You can actually use this to get around pretty easily. If you have a lot of balance issues, the iWalk 3.0 might not be for you, but you'd be surprised how well you do with it. I have a video and discount codes on the iWalk 3.0. This is something I was skeptical of at the beginning, but you can see it's actually worked its way up my list. If I broke my foot, I would definitely buy one of these. They're cheaper now and they're pretty effective, especially as you get your brain wrapped around it. It's much more unique than a knee scooter. Check out the videos in my review. The iWalk is phenomenal. A study in 2013 by Salisbury actually found that the iWalk 3.0 can improve mobility by 40% and reduce upper body fatigue by 30%. So if you're getting tight shoulders, a sore back, that's not a problem with the iWalk. Number three, I already talked about this, a walker or a rollator, especially if you're older. These ones, you can lean all your body weight on it. You can fold it up. 
If you're a younger, balanced person, try out the iWalk. They work extremely well. I'm a huge fan of the iWalk, but a walker is always the safer go-to way. Now, I know some of the studies say it that crutches are better. I personally hate crutches. Almost every single one of my patients hate crutches. I don't even know why they exist. Walkers are pretty much cheaper than crutches. Why don't people just use walkers? That's just my opinion. Let me know if I'm wrong. Number three, the air walker boot. There's two types. There's the cam boot and then there's the air walker boot. They're pretty much the same except the air walker has air bladders. So you can pump them up with air and they squeeze your legs. So they give you compression. Now there's two ways I like to use this. If you're not too sore, one of the compression ankle braces can work great because they keep your swelling down. Plus you get some of that gentle compression from the boot and a sturdy boot then immobilizes your foot and your ankle. And they all have the built-in rocker at the bottom. You can actually just roll through it. That makes you bend more through your knee, keeps pressure off the foot, the air bladder holds you, you get a compression brace. On the other side, you have good supportive shoes with a lift. It keeps your back equal. You're maybe using your knee walker at the same time. You're keeping all that pressure off of it. You're just doing extremely good. And that lets you keep moving, keeps you athletic, keeps your muscle strength strong. A study by Leibowitz in 2012 showed that these air walker boots can help by 30%. Now you only need these usually for the first six weeks, unless your bone's not healing, unless if you have diabetes or for some other reason, you're healing slowly. Number one, a cast. This is the gold standard. I know a lot of people don't like casts because you can't shower yourself, you can't get pressure off of it. If it's a severe fracture, like if your skin's bruised or you have blisters, just go with the cast. Your doctor can put a wrap for compression on it. You can put your cast on there. It guarantees that you're doing good. The problem with the Airwalker boot is people take it off and I've had so many patients trip and fall down the stairs or getting in and out of the shower. For the first week or two, especially if you're high risk, go with the cast, you know, tell your doctor or your surgeon that you want to go with this. Be safe. I know you don't think that's the case, but it's an absolute disaster if you re-break your foot or you rip the skin and it gets infected. I really would hate for that to happen for you. And then on the other foot, you want good shoes, good orthotics. Here's what you want to do in order. You want to get a cast or an air walker boot. I would usually say if it's more severe, start with the cast, but an air walker boot's great. I would personally go with a walker or an eye walk. I love the eye walk. I think it's very practical. I think that's a good new breakthrough. I don't like the crutches. If you're going long distances and knee scooters, great. Then you want to lace up ankle brace after the first few weeks. You could even wear a compression brace inside your walking boot, but then you want to go with a lace-up boot with a soft insole with a good pair of shoes like a pair of Hoka or a Brooks Ghost Max in there. And then you want to keep with the good shoes, the good insoles for the next couple months until your swelling is down, until you're doing good. Keep that swelling down, keep moving, keep your muscle strength up. And that's the best way to recover from your broken foot, your broken ankle, or your severe ankle sprain. If I'm missing any devices you want to see, let me know. Hit me up in the comments. I really appreciate you guys watching.